Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us, by visiting their final resting places. Today we're exploring cemeteries around Italy, where we'll find such stars as Anna Magnani, Sergio Leone, Raphael, Percy Shelley, and many more. Join us, won't you? We've seen Switzerland, we've toured Paris, and now it's time to end our exploration of famous graves across Europe in beautiful Italia. Italy, il bel paese, birthplace of the Renaissance, pizza, and this guy, who if you've followed our channel, you'll know is Giuseppe Vasapoli, composer of the Hollywood Graveyard soundtrack. As Giuseppe lives in Italy, this is actually the first time he has joined me for the filming of Hollywood Graveyard since we began experimenting with videos back in 2016. So Giuseppe, what do you think of the process of filming Hollywood Graveyard? Mmm, too much b-roll. Nah, one can never have too much b-roll, especially in a land as beautiful as Italy. This was a special excursion for me as well, since my ancestors were from Italy. The passion for the arts and music runs deep here in Italy. It's in its very bones, their language like a spoken song. Here we'll find everyone from Renaissance masters who would be the namesake of Ninja Turtles centuries later, to modern day legends of the screen, radio, and stage. We'll be covering much of Italy, from Sicily in the south all the way up to Milan in the north. So we'll be breaking up our tour of Italy into two parts. We'll begin our tour on the island where Giuseppe was born, the ball being kicked by the boot that is the mainland peninsula, Sicily. Winding countryside roads take us into the heart of the island of Sicily, which felt about as far away from Hollywood as one could possibly get. This quaint little Sicilian town is called Polizzi Generosa. What a charming little town it was, and equally charming was the cemetery here at Polizzi Generosa. So much history here, and you just don't see cemeteries like this in the States. Such are the treasures one discovers when going well off the beaten path. What brings us here to one of the most remote cemeteries we've ever visited? A character actor who you will instantly recognize. Here resting in the Italian countryside we find Vincent Schiavelli. If you don't know his name, you definitely know his face. Vincent was everywhere from the 70s to the 2000s. He played Fredrickson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Mr. Vargas in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, the organ grinder in Batman Returns, Dr. Kaufman in Tomorrow Never Dies, and the subway ghost in Ghost. Hey! Get off my train! No. And on television he made memorable appearances in shows like The X-Files and Taxi. Schiavelli also wrote a number of books, including a book of recipes from right here in Polizzi Generosa, which is where his grandfather was from, and where he would spend his final years. Vincent Schiavelli passed away from cancer at age 57. When a great artist lives inside a great man, his soul is destined to remain eternal. True of Vince, and so many we've visited in the past and will yet visit. We're in Palermo now. This is Cimitero dei Cappuccini. It is adjacent to the world famous Cappuccini Catacombs of Palermo, a notorious destination for lovers of all things macabre, featuring hundreds of mummies on display, including one known as the Sleeping Beauty, Rosalia Lombardo. Unfortunately for us, the catacombs were closed due to COVID, so we were unable to visit during our time there. Perhaps next time. Here in the adjacent cemetery, we find a famous Italian writer, Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa. He was the last prince of Lampedusa. He is most famous for his only novel, Il Gatto Pardo, The Leopard, published posthumously in 1958. The book chronicles the changes in Sicilian life during Italian unification. It would go on to become one of the best-selling and most important novels in Italian literature. In 1963 it would be made into a film starring Burt Lancaster. Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa died from lung cancer at the age of 60. Time to say 
goodbye to the beautiful island of Sicily and hop a boat for the mainland of Italy. The sun set on Sicily and rose in Napoli, or Naples as we know it in English. Naples is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, resting in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius. It's been one of the key cultural and artistic centers throughout the history of this region, and perhaps most famously, is where Italian pizza was invented. Our first stop here, after a nice breakfast of cafe and sfogliatella of course, is Cimitero di Santa Maria del Pianto, which overlooks the city of Naples and Mount Vesuvius off in the distance, high on a hill. The history of this cemetery dates back to 1656 when the plague ravaged the region. To accommodate the many burials far outside of the city, the dead were laid to rest in a cave nearby. To commemorate them, a church was built close to this site, Santa Maria del Pianto. In 1865 this cemetery was opened in the grounds surrounding the church of Santa Maria del Pianto. There are a number of legendary Neapolitan stars here. Among them is Antonio de Curtis, better known by the mononym Toto. He is one of the most popular film stars in Italian history. Known as the Prince of Laughter, he's best known for his work in comedy, many of his popular films featuring Toto as a titular character, like Toto al Giro d'Italia and Toto a Colori. And the 1966 film The Hawks and the Sparrows earned him numerous awards, including a Golden Globe. Toto was also a lyricist and poet, one of his poems, A Livella, inscribed here on the exterior of his tomb. It touches on death as a source of humor and as the great equalizer. And his song, Mala Femina, has become a classic of Neapolitan music, and was an inspiration for his popular film, Toto Peppino e la Mala Femina. Femina, tu sia più bella femina, se voglio bene to. The beloved Toto died in 1967 at the age of 69 after suffering a series of heart attacks. Three funerals were held for Toto, one in Rome and two here in Naples. Along the next street down we find actor Nino Taranto. His very first film role in 1924 was in a movie ironically titled See Naples and Then Die. He rose to popularity in the 50s and 60s, perhaps most notably in the film Anni Facili, and is also remembered as the sometimes sidekick of Toto. Nino Taranto passed away at age 78 in 1986. When we arrived at the tomb of our next star, we were bummed to see that it was covered in scaffolding and a tarp for repairs. So we'll have to use Hollywood magic to see what it looks like without the scaffolding. Hollywood magic in this context being a friend with a camera who came back after restorations were finished. Before there was Pavarotti, there was Enrico Caruso. In the early 20th century, he was the preeminent operatic tenor in the world, performing in high demand throughout Europe and America, including close to 900 performances at the New York Metropolitan Opera. And in the 19-teens, he would be among the very first operatic singers to be commercially recorded. These phonograph recordings would help make him an international star. In his late 40s, Caruso began suffering from a series of painful ailments. His health declined rapidly, and he died in 1921 at the age of 48, his death attributed to peritonitis. His funeral was attended by thousands, his preserved body placed in a glass sarcophagus that for the next eight years mourners could view. In 1929, his remains were finally sealed in this tomb. That'll do it for Santa Maria del Pianto, moving on now to our next Neapolitan cemetery, Cimitero di San Giorgio. Let's head to the mausoleum in the southeast corner of the cemetery. Here we find the comedian of feelings, Massimo Troisi. He was an actor, writer, and director, considered among the most important in Italian cinema. He's remembered for films like I'm Starting From Three, and what would be his last and best-known film, Il Postino, The Postman. 
Not only did he star in Il Postino, he also co-wrote and co-directed it. Il poeta dell'amore. Il poeta del popolo. Posta. He was nominated for two Oscars for the film, for acting and writing. Sadly, these would be posthumous. Working through a heart condition to finish Il Postino, he died from a heart attack 12 hours after the cameras stopped rolling. Massimo was just 41. He's entombed here with his parents. In addition to his actual crypt, there's a memorial monument to Troisi out on the grounds of the cemetery. It includes a walking path with several of his films listed. Let's continue to make our way up the peninsula to our next cemetery. One of the real treats of this grave hunting road trip through Italy was the unexpected nature of each cemetery we visited. There was little photographic documentation of many of these sites, so we had no idea what to expect. And as such, we were often pleasantly surprised. Such was the case with this little gem of a cemetery, with a magnificent view of the Mediterranean Sea off in the distance. This is Cimitero di San Felice Circeo, on the western coast of Italy between Naples and Rome. As with our last cemetery, it's situated high on a hill, and was just so incredibly unique and photogenic. A few stars to find here. Just in from the gate is Alberto Lupo, not to be confused with Lupo Alberto. He was an actor best known for roles in historical action and adventure films, like The Lion of Thebes, and perhaps most notably, alongside Charlton Heston and Rex Harrison in The Agony and the Ecstasy. He was just 59 when he died. Resting alongside Alberto is his wife, Lila Rocco. She was an actress who could be seen in a few dozen productions in the 50s and 60s. Among her memorable films are Journey to Italy, One Step to Eternity, and The Playgirls and the Vampire. She retired from acting in 1964, living to be 81. Let's head to the top of the stairs and take a left to one of the rooms adjacent to the chapel. Herein we find the tomb of Anna Magnani. She was an actress who rose to popularity in the 40s in films like Roberto Rossellini's Rome, Open City. Her style was described as passionate, fiery, and volcanic. Today she's best remembered for her role as Serafina Delle Rose in 1955's The Rose Tattoo. Tennessee Williams wrote the role of Serafina with Anna in mind. The role would earn her the Oscar for Best Actress, making Anna the first Italian actress to win an Oscar. Stay with me tonight. Don't go. Don't go, darling. I don't understand these strange night rounds that you make. She was also nominated for Wild is the Wind. Anna Magnani died from cancer at age 65 and was temporarily entombed in the family mausoleum of Roberto Rossellini, then later laid to rest here. We could have spent hours at this magnificent little cemetery, but we have much of Italy to explore, so it's time to move on. We continue to make our way north toward the capital of Italy, Rome. We've got two stops to make outside the city before we head into Rome. We're now in Pratica di Mare, and Cimitero di Pratica di Mare. Here in the tiny walled off cemetery is the lion of Italian cinema, Sergio Leone. He's considered one of the most influential filmmakers, not just of Italian cinema, but of all time. He's credited as the originator of the Spaghetti Western, so named as they were westerns produced in Italy. His filmmaking style, including long shots, extreme close-ups, and use of music, would establish the oft-imitated hallmarks of the genre. Among his best-known films are The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Once Upon a Time in America, and one of my favorite films of all time, once Upon a Time in the West. Sergio Leone would be a major influence on later generations of filmmakers, including Quentin Tarantino. Leone died from a heart attack at age 60. His epitaph alludes to his famous film titles, C'era una volta, c'è, ci sarà sempre. Once upon a time there was, there is, and there always will be. 
Just outside the city of Rome is Cimitero Laurentino. It's one of the newer cemeteries we'll find here in Italy, founded in 2002. Here we find a frequent collaborator of Sergio Leone. He was the John Williams to Leone Steven Spielberg. Here lies Ennio Morricone, one of the greatest film composers of all time. When you think of spaghetti western music, the electric guitars, harmonicas, whistlers, shakers, and other rustic sounds that deviate from the Copeland-esque orchestral music of American westerns, you're thinking of the music of Ennio Morricone. His themes, including For the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, are some of the most recognized in movie history. He wrote the music for all but one of Sergio Leone's films, but he's also known for soaring lyrical and orchestral scores like Cinema Paradiso. Quentin Tarantino was a longtime admirer of Morricone, and finally got the chance to work with him, hiring him to score The Hateful Eight in 2015. This would earn Morricone the Oscar for Best Music. He had over 500 credits to his name, making him one of the most prolific composers of all time. Ennio Morricone died in 2020 at the age of 91. Let's head now into the historic city of Rome, passing through the ancient walls, beyond which we find one-of-a-kind sites like Roman ruins, the Colosseum, Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, ornately painted ceilings in centuries-old cathedrals, and this random seagull sitting on an ancient pillar. The king of cemeteries here in Rome is Campo Verano. It's hard to sum up the experience of visiting a cemetery like Campo Verano. Majestic is a word that comes to mind if you're not rendered speechless. This area has been a burial site for at least 2,000 years, dating back to ancient catacombs. The current cemetery was founded in the early 19th century, officially consecrated in 1835. With magnificent monuments on every corner, it has become an open-air museum to the dead. numerous stars and notable figures here. Way more than we could ever cover in a day, but let's see who we can get to. But before we do, some food for thought from the dead here at Campo Verano. Quello che siete fumo, quello che siamo sarete. That which you are, we once were. That which we are, you will be. If we take the first left after the entrance, at the end we find the statue of a man in repose. This is Goffredo Mamelli. He was a 19th century writer best remembered today for penning the lyrics of Il Canto degli Italiani, Italy's national anthem, written in 1847 when Mamelli was just 20. He died at just 21 in a battle during the Siege of Rome in 1849. He was originally interred here, but nearly a century later moved to the Mausoleum Osario the Gianicolo. That's Romulus and Remus up there, mythological symbols of the founding of Rome. Part of this monument to Mameli that's now a cenotaph. Continuing straight in on the path from the main entrance is the Quadriportico, a walled courtyard area. In the southeast corner of the colonnade we find Suzo Cecchi D'Amico. She was one of the notable screenwriters of Italian cinema in the 20th century, with over a hundred films to her credit. She's perhaps best remembered for films like The Taming of the Shrew, Bicycle Thieves, and Casanova 70, which earned her an Oscar nomination. Suso lived to the age of 96. Hopping over to the outside of the Quadriportico, on the southeast side we find the grave of Il Matatore, Vittorio Gassman, one of the greats of Italian stage and screen. He played Stanley Kowalski in the Italian stage production of A Streetcar Named Desire, as well as Shakespearean roles like Othello. On the big screen he starred in the original version of Scent of a Woman, alongside Elizabeth Taylor in Rhapsody, and in the film Sleepers. 
He was also the Italian dubbed voice of Mufasa in The Lion King. Vittorio Gassman was the kind of actor who could read the yellow pages and make them sound dramatic. He died from a heart attack at the age of 77. Let's head south to the Zona Ampliamento. Here lies Massimo Girotti. The handsome, chiseled leading man is known for roles of action heroes and lovers in the 40s through the 60s, in films like Desire, Obsession, and Sins of Rome as Spartacus. He can also be seen in Bertolucci's Last Tango in Paris. He continued acting right up until the end, passing away from a heart attack at age 84. Just a few spaces away is a man who directed Girotti in a number of films, Vittorio De Sica. He's considered among the greats of Italian directors. Among his best known films are Bicycle Thieves, Umberto Di, and The Garden of the Finzi Contini's which won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film in 1972. Vittorio was also an actor, and in 1957 would become the first Italian actor nominated for an Oscar for his role in A Farewell to Arms. He died from lung cancer at age 73. In the next section southwest we find the grand tomb of Aldo Fabrizi. He was a beloved comedic actor and writer here in Italy. He started performing in music halls and on variety shows before becoming a popular figure on screen. His best known role is that of the brave priest in Rossellini's Rome Open City in 1945. He's also remembered for often partnering up on screen with Toto, like in the film Cops and Robbers, which he also co-wrote. Aldo Fabrizi lived to be 84. Nearby is the grave of Sergio Corbucci. As a director, he's known as one of the legends of the spaghetti western genre, right up there with Sergio Leone. Corbucci's films were known for being dark and particularly brutal, like The Great Silence and his best known film, Django. 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 As the popularity of the western waned, Corbucci found later success directing comedies, but will always be remembered for his westerns. Django, which was released in 1966, was the inspiration for Django Unchained, released in 2012. Django is co-written with his brother, Bruno, who also rests here. We're in the very southwest corner of the cemetery now. Heading into this courtyard, we find the grave of Nino Manfredi. He appeared in some of the most popular Italian comedies of the 60s and 70s. His best known film is Per Grazia Ricevuta, Between Miracles, which he also directed. It won him the Palme d'Or for Best First Film Award at the Cannes Film Festival. He also found success on television, playing Geppetto in The Adventures of Pinocchio. Nino lived to be 83. Not far away in this same courtyard is Marcello Mastroianni, one of Italy's biggest stars in his day, who would become an international star. Among his best known films are La Dolce Vita and Eight and a Half. He was nominated for three Oscars in his career, including for the 1963 film Divorce Italian Style, which was the first time a male actor was nominated for a foreign language film. Marcello Mastroianni died from cancer at age 72. Circling back northeast in Riquadro 145, we find Alberto Sordi, another of Italy's popular comedic stars. He began his career dubbing Oliver Hardy's voice for the Italian Laurel and Hardy films. Among his most beloved roles are as a peace-loving fascist officer in The Best of Enemies, and as an Italian laborer in To Bed or Not To Bed. Alberto won seven David Di Donatello awards throughout his career, Italy's equivalent of the Oscar. Alberto Sordi died from complications of lung cancer and pneumonia at the age of 82. Continuing east, we reach a series of buildings that, if you didn't know we were in a cemetery, you might mistake for apartment complexes. Heading into one of these apartment complexes for the dead, we find the crypt of Rino Gaetano. He was a singer and songwriter who rose to popularity in the 1970s with hits like Gianna and Ma il cielo è sempre più blu. Ma il cielo è sempre più blu. Rino's promising career was cut tragically short in 1981 when he was severely injured in a car accident. He was taken to the hospital in a coma, but there were no cranial trauma specialists there, nor could any be found for assistance from nearby hospitals, 
so by the next morning Reno was dead. This failure of the hospitals caused significant controversy in Reno's death. He was just 30. Is Reno loved and missed by his many fans? The writing's on the wall, though it should probably be in this book here instead. Heading across the street we stumbled onto an unexpected find, the uniqueness of this tombstone catching our eye. We looked him up to discover that Vincenzo Mirigliani here was the head of the Miss Italia beauty pageant for some 50 years. Let's turn our compass now toward the north. Heading into this mausoleum complex we find the crypt of Ciccio Ingrassia. He was a comedic actor, remembered as half of comedy duo Franco and Ciccio, with Franco Franchi, sort of an Italian analog of Laurel and Hardy. They were popular in the 60s and 70s, appearing in over 100 films together, like war Italian style. He was also seen in Fellini's Amacord. Ciccio died from heart failure at age 80. A little more sightseeing before we move on. So many unique sights around every corner here at Campo Verano. Let's make our way now northeast to the Nuovo Reparto and into Chapel 3. Here we find the crypt of Gabriella Ferri. She was a popular Italian singer in the 60s, having a hit in the song Sempre. <laughs> She also acted in a handful of productions, including Remus and Romulus. Gabriella died at age 61 after a fall from her balcony. Along the opposite wall is actress Alida Valli, sometimes just credited as Valli. She found international fame in films like Hitchcock's The Paradine Case and The Third Man alongside Orson Welles. <laughs> won the David Di Donatello Award for La Caduta degli Angeli Rebelli in 1982. Alida Valli lived to be 84. Heading now to the northwest corner of the cemetery, Monte Portonaccio, we find the Vasaturro Amato family room, where Bud Spencer is entombed. Spencer, whose real name was Carlo Pedersoli, was one of the popular actors of spaghetti westerns and action comedy films of the 60s and 70s known for his frequent on-screen partnership with Terence Hill. Among the popular films Spencer and Hill appeared in are Ace High and as Bambino and Trinity in the Trinity series. Get going. Before acting, he was a champion swimmer, the first Italian to swim the 100 meters in under a minute. But Spencer lived to be 86. Also here is Giuseppe Amato, one of the great producers of Italian cinema. Among the notable films he produced are La Dolce Vita and Bicycle Thieves. He died at the age of 64 from a heart attack. Just southeast we find the grave of another legendary Italian film composer, Nino Rota. Like Morricone, Nino Rota is remembered for having crafted some of the most iconic themes in movie history. He's perhaps best remembered today for his music for The Godfather, including the haunting main theme. and the soaring love theme. Rota won the Oscar for The Godfather Part II. Another timeless classic featuring the music of Rota is Romeo and Juliet. A rose will bloom, it then will fade. He scored some 180 productions before passing away from a coronary thrombosis at age 67. Circling around toward the west, we reach the section known as Ex Evangelici. Here is the tomb of father and son, Peppino and Luigi De Filippo. Peppino was a beloved Naples-born funny man, remembered for appearing alongside Toto in a number of comedies in the 50s and 60s, like Toto, Peppino e la Malefemmina, and La Banda degli Onesti. 
He also worked with Fellini in films like Boccaccio 70. Peppino lived to be 76. His son Luigi also became a famous actor, with a notable stage career in Naples and Rome. He could also be seen in popular Italian comedies like Lazzarella and Love Italian Style. He lived to be 87. On the exterior of the tomb is a poem written by Peppino, dedicated to his wife Lydia upon her death. In section Alto Piano Pincetto, one of the elevated sections of the cemetery, we find filmmaker Roberto Rossellini, one of the great writers and directors of Italian cinema. He was a key figure of the neorealism movement of the 50s and 60s that would change the face of international cinema, inspiring future filmmakers like Martin Scorsese. Among his best-known films are Rome, Open City, Germany, Year Zero, and Paisan, which earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Writing. Roberto was married to actress Ingrid Bergman and is the father of actress Isabella Rossellini. He died after suffering a heart attack in 1977 at age 71. For our last stop here in Campo Verano, we head to a pathway flanked by niches and crypts called Scalione Tiburtino. Here we find the crypt of Ferruccio Amendola. He was a pioneer of Italian voice dubbing. By the 60s, he was the go-to man to dub the Italian voices in non-Italian films for some of Hollywood's biggest stars. He dubbed Al Pacino in The Godfather, Sylvester Stallone in Rocky and Rambo, Doc Brown in Back to the Future, and Dustin Hoffman's Captain Hook in Hook, among many, many others. The famous voice actor died, somewhat ironically, of throat cancer at age 71. Our next cemetery is north of the city of Rome, Cimitero Flaminio. It was established in the 1940s, and at 140 hectares is the largest cemetery in Italy by land area. In zone 12 to the west, in the mausoleum, we find the crypt of Eduardo Cianelli. He was a character actor in the 30s through the 60s, known for playing gangsters and criminals in action and horror films of that era. He's remembered for films like Strange Cargo and for playing the guru in Gunga Din. He also played the title role in 1940's Mysterious Dr. Satan. Eduardo was also nominated for a Tony for his role in Broadway's The Devil's Advocate. He continued performing right up until the end, passing away at age 81. Just a few sections north, we find Renato Raschel. As an actor, he's remembered for films like The Overcoat and The Secret of Santa Vittoria. But today, his greatest legacy is perhaps his song, Arrivederci Roma, one of the most famous Italian songs of all time. Arrivederci Roma Goodbye It was written as part of the soundtrack of the film of the same name, which he also starred in. The song has been performed by legends from Mario Lanza to Bing Crosby. Renato Rascio lived to be 78. Southwest to section 72, we find someone who wrote another of Italy's most famous songs. Here lies Domenico Modugno. He's best known today for writing the song Nel Blu di Pinto di Blu, better known as Volare which not only won him the Grammy for Song of the Year, but has also become one of the most widely recorded and performed songs in history. Volare, oh, nel blu, dipinto di blu. It's been performed by legends from Dean Martin to Ella Fitzgerald. Modugno was also an actor seen in films like Lazzarella. He died from a heart attack at the age of 66. Near the middle of the cemetery is a grand columbarium. Here is the niche of Francesca Bertini, known as one of the first divas of cinema. Francesca was one of the most successful silent film actresses, not just in Italy, but worldwide. She was one of the first actresses to develop a more real and natural approach to screen acting, as opposed to the hyperbolic dramatics many had brought from the stage. Among her best-known films are Tosca in 1918 and Assunta Spina, which she also wrote and directed. 
She made a few talkies before retiring, but was convinced by Bernardo Bertolucci to make one last appearance on screen, in the 1976 film 1900. Francesca lived to the age of 93. For our last stop here at Flaminio, we visit the northernmost mausoleum. Oh, hello Padre Pio. Here we find the crypt of Sorolella. Her real name was Elena Fabrizi, the sister of Aldo Fabrizi, who we visited earlier. Acting began as a hobby for Sorolella, but she found surprising success, winning a silver ribbon for her role in Bianco Rosso e Verdone, and a David Di Donatello award for her performance in Acqua e Sapone. She would then become a familiar face in Italian television. Sorolella died from a stroke at age 78. In our tour of Paris, we visited the Pantheon. This is the Italian Pantheon, the original actually. It was built by Emperor Hadrian around 120 AD, and is one of the oldest and best preserved ancient monuments in Rome. It was originally a pagan temple to Roman gods, Pantheon meaning all gods. In the year 609, the building was converted into a Catholic church by Pope Boniface IV. It's notable for the massive 142-foot dome, with an oculus at the top a design that has inspired many imitations around the world. Once the Pantheon became a Catholic church, it would then become the burial place for notable Italian figures. Among them are several monarchs, including Vittorio Emanuele II, father of the Patria, the first king of United Italy, and his son Umberto I. Umberto was married to Queen Margarita of Savoy. You pizza lovers will be curious to know that, according to legend, she is the namesake of the Margarita Pizza, the original Neapolitan pizza, created for her in 1889, the red, white, and green ingredients chosen to reflect the Italian flag. Not far from Queen Margarita is the grave of Renaissance master Raphael. He was born in Urbino in 1483, and in his short life would become one of the most popular painters of all time. He moved to Florence to study with other masters, like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. As his notoriety grew, he began to get important commissions, including from the Vatican. Among his most notable works are the Transfiguration, the Sistine Madonna, featuring perhaps the most famous cherubs in history at the bottom, and the Raphael stanzas at the Vatican, which feature the fresco considered his masterpiece, the School of Athens. It represents the rebirth of ancient Greek philosophy, and perfectly embodied the spirit of the Renaissance. Raphael was just 37 when he died. The inscription on his tomb reads, Here lies that famous Raphael, by whom nature feared to be conquered while he lived, and when he was dying, feared herself to die. 80s kids like me also remember Raphael as the namesake of this guy. For our last stop here in Rome, let's hop the metro and head south to the Pyramide. Flanking the ancient pyramid of Caio Cestio is the Cimitero Acatolico di Roma, the non-Catholic cemetery of Rome. Norms of the Catholic Church forbade burying non-Catholics in consecrated ground, including Protestants and Jews as well as those who committed suicide or were actors. As such, these individuals had to be buried elsewhere often under the darkness of night. In the early 18th century, Pope Clement XI allowed for burials in the shadow of the ancient pyramid of Caiochestio. Then in the 19th century, the adjoining area was formed into the new cemetery. This was a truly beautiful cemetery, quite distinct from the others we visited here in Rome. And if you've ever seen this monument before, Either in a cemetery near you or on the album cover of your favorite band, you'll be curious to know that those are all replicas of this sculpture. This is the original Angel of Grief, found right here in Rome, carved in 1894 by sculptor William Story for his wife, Emmeline. Most of those buried here are non-Italian, but there are a few famous Italians found here too. Among them, Andrea Camilleri. He was a writer who found his success quite late in life. In 1992, when he was well into his 60s, he wrote his first best-selling novel, Hunting Season. Two years later, he published the first in what would become his most popular series of novels, featuring a fictitious detective named Inspector Montalbano. The popularity of the character and series would lead to adaptations on both television and film. 
Camilleri died at the age of 93 after suffering a heart attack. Back toward the main entrance, a sign indicates the direction to other famous graves. Atop the hill we find this distinctive monument to Belinda Lee. She was a British actress who rose to popularity in the 50s and 60s, known for playing roles of the blonde sex goddess. She was Aphrodite in Goddess of Love, Lucretia Borgia in The Knights of Lucretia Borgia, and received top billing in The Secret Place. By the late 50s she had moved to Italy to make movies here, like Ghosts of Rome. But her life was cut tragically short while visiting California in 1961. The car she was riding in crashed near San Bernardino. Belinda Lee died at the age of 25. Her remains returned here to Rome for burial. Nearby is Percy Bysshe Shelley, one of the major English Romantic poets. Like so many artists of that era, his work was little known in his lifetime. But since that time, his poems like Ozymandias, Ode to the West Wind, and The Mask of Anarchy have become hallmarks of English Romanticism. Percy was married to Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, who famously wrote Frankenstein. While living here in Rome, Percy Shelley died in a shipwreck off the coast of Italy at the age of 29. His body washed up on shore days later. There, on the sands of Via Reggio, a small funeral was held and his body was cremated. But parts of him didn't burn completely, including, famously, his heart, the remains of which were given to his wife Mary, who kept it with her for the remainder of her life. That piece of Percy Shelley's heart would eventually be interred in the family vault in England, where Mary and their son Percy are laid to rest. This quote here on his tomb is from Shakespeare's The Tempest. Peace, peace, he is not dead, he doth not sleep. He hath awakened from the dream of life. Tis we, who lost in stormy visions, keep with phantoms an unprofitable strife. So wrote Percy Shelley about his friend, who rests nearby, in the old section of the cemetery, John Keats, another of England's renowned and beloved poets of the Romantic era. Among his best-known works are his series of odes, including Ode to a Nightingale. Darkling I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names, and in many amused rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Just as the nightingale in this poem is immortal through his song, John Keats is immortal through his poetry. But his physical body gave up the ghost at the tender age of 25, from the illness that took so many so young in those days, tuberculosis. He died in Rome in 1821, his last request that he be laid to rest under a tombstone bearing no name, only the words, here lies one whose name was writ in water. His tombstone also features a lyre, the symbol of a poet. The missing strings represent a life cut short. Next to Keats is his friend, artist Joseph Severn, who nursed him as his illness progressed and he lay dying. Nearby is a relief sculpture of Keats, beneath which is an acrostic poem, the first letter of each line spelling out Keats. Keats, if thy cherished name be writ in water, each drop has fallen from some mourner's cheek. A sacred tribute such as heroes seek, though oft in vain for dazzling deeds of slaughter. Sleep on, not honored less for epitaph so meek. And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Grazie per aver guardato. Ci vediamo al prossimo. Look who we met in Rome. The Italian cousin of Close Up the Hollywood Forever Cemetery Cat. His name is Arturo Oscuro. And you know, he's a pretty cool cat.